not on a recording yet. Hey, where's my seat? <laughs> I don't have a stool. Is it recording yet? Yeah. Oh, okay, then. Okay, I'll just wait here then. Thanks, mate. <laughs> I stole your stool. Which side do you want to be on? This one. I'm that right one. here. Okay. Ah. Shuffle over a bit more. There you go. That's better. Okay, now we've got it. All right. <coughs> Ready? Yeah. Hi. Welcome to everyone's favorite segment, Mailbag. Sagan is back. Say hi, Sagan. Hi. You're supposed to say hi, Sagan. <laughs> what? I tricked you. I get it. I get, get it. it. All right. Sagan's back because it. it's school holidays, isn't it, dude? Yeah. The hovering DeLorean, which we got to hover once. Once. But it gave up our hopes. We got to hover and we rotate and it would rotate and spin. It was just too tricky, wasn't it? Yeah, it's so tricky. Yeah. Which is a shame because it's, it's really quite good. Cool. But I'm sure we could get it going again. Anyway, next on the shelf, let's have a look. This is from Australia. Uh, and it is from, from Tyler. Tyler. Thank you very much, Tyler. All right, from South Kingswood in South Australia. Thank you very much, Tyler. And it does have, I must slash it here with the Crocodile Dundee knife. So can I have the large knife there, please, Sagan? Oh, oh, that is heavier than that I remember. Heavy. Yeah. That's re heavier than I remember. <laughs> All Last right, so I'm going, to, I'm going to have to slash it. Here we go. Here we go. It's kind of hard. There's a box inside. Duh. There's a box inside. Duh. Anyway, here we go. Oh, cool. What One. is it? This is, it's a, it's G a Tog Tog. XL Australia GPS. Dunno. I found this still working, I think. 2008 Tom Tom. Oh, wow. While well, excavating at, a, at the dig site. I've never had any formal education in electronics, but courtesy of the technicians at uni and your YouTube channel, now making me my, my own rechargeable remote data acquisition modules. Awesome. And instrumentations with embedded, embedded, embedded Bluetooth. Perhaps a teardown of this artifact to me, an artifact would prove educational for the masses. We can do a teardown, no worries. So, wow. all right. It's a fully full GPS found in the dump. That's found crazy. in the dumpster. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. All ah. right. Oh, cool. Wow, it's sort of like mint in box. But it's still got the plastic hey, on the... take it off. Plastic yeah. on the top. Mint in box. Wow. All right, we'll do a teardown. Tom Tom GPS. I love teardowns. You love teardowns? Yeah. Check it out. Mint in box. Tom Tom XL Australia. This would have been the Ducks Guts spoken street names. Oh, this would have been the Ducks Guts back in the day. Let me tell you, I was a bit of a uh, Tom Tom fanboy back in the day before I. Uh, borrowed somebody's uh, Tom Tom that had the world maps on it, and I went to Hawaii, and uh, so we took it over there, yeah, used it in the uh, rental car we had over there, and we're trying to find our way to a restaurant. I think it was on the Big Island, and it took us to a paddock filled with porter dunnies. I kid you not, porter dunnies. Um. Yeah, that was bizarre. Right then, we yeah we ditched it. Anyway, um, yeah, this is mint in box. Look, at it, it's still got the protective wrapper on it. Oh, that beautiful. It's got all the original cables and the original manual. Oh. Right, so how do you get this open? I assume you prise it all the way around there. Hmm, I'll get back to you. It's hard to do it with the bloody camera in the way. Well, it looks like it's a... There's a two-level plastic, there's a plastic outer bezel, and then there's a metal shield under there as well. So, are you supposed to get the plastic one off first or not? I think so. Ah, oh, it's not going to be pretty. That's the ticket. Have to get a bit medieval on its ass. And then we've got the metal bezel. I do recall now that way back, I think in the garage days, um, I 
actually released a like a Dave voice um, GPS thing. Was it? I think it was for Garmin, and it was. It's probably on the forum and the website somewhere. You can probably still download it. Um, yeah, my voice file. So you get my voice coming up. Ah, oh, Chucky Yui, mate. Turn left at the next light, you dickhead. Hang a right at the next servo. All right, so four screws and this is just going to pop out. Ta-da! We're in like Flynn. Oh, do we have a puffy battery? Might have a puffy battery. Oh, it's a Maxell. Wow. Spared no expense. And, yeah, you know, it's going to have a GPS receiver and a processor and, you know, it's about it. It's a two-minute teardown. And the LCD's got some... Uh, Flat flex circuitry on there, just some drivers, that'd be like a backlight driver. So, single board solution of course, that's what you'd expect. Ah, big enough speaker at the back, there you go, that's not too shabby, of course, nice big port on the back. And I guess that's kind of blocked if you have it fully pressed in like that, but if you have it bent out, then yeah, it can get out. Okay, it looks like we've got our flash memory down here, the uh, firmware version is a uh, sticker is a dead giveaway anyway you've got all your passives on the back whole bunch of uh, termination resistors around here they're all your bypass caps so there's a chippy on there you can see all the vias coming through so that's probably the large processor and we can probably pop these cans off too aha under that can that's all our power supply jobbies because you know you can tell a uh, controller because you've got the inductors and a whole bunch of uh, passives and whatnot around there and uh, that's and our output uh, main output uh, filter cap is on the other side of that by the looks of it and of course on the top we've just got a little uh, patch antenna that's yeah you know, it's good enough for australia and right next to the patch antenna surprise surprise is our gps receiver and it's in an infinian hammerhead PMB 2520 for those playing long at home and the data sheets one of those ridiculous NDA BS things but yeah Google fixes that so yeah it's just a single chip uh, GPS solution it's got the RF uh, front end so RF straight in and then it's got all the correlation engines and all the rest of the GPS goodness um, and then just data out basically and not inside a shield, but uh, yeah, it's got its own little ground around there, is a Wolfson uh, audio DAC chipset. So you need that for your speaker, of course, but your speaker driver, is that it on the bottom? Couldn't even be bothered to look it up. Sure it is. And the heart of this thing is a um, Samsung ARM 926 processor, 2004 vintage, and it's specifically designed and targeted to what uh, mobile GPS applications, you know, low power, all that uh, sort of jazz back in the day. So, yeah, exactly what you'd expect, and some memory, and pff, Bob's your uncle. And of course you might notice that because it's near the LCD connector, there's no other driver. That's obviously got an LCD driver built in. So yeah, um, Samsung specifically targeted and marketed these to the GPS market. And well, yeah, TomTom Tom lapped it up. And also what happens a lot is that companies like uh, TomTom, uh, I don't know how big they were back in the day, but like large companies can actually approach companies like Samsung and, hey, and say, hey, you know, like, customize us a chip that's you know suited to our particular application and yeah we'll let you sell it to other people as well but uh yeah we want this specific one because we notice you have this off the you know this already existing chip but uh we'd like it to have this feature or take out that feature to make it a bit lower power etc etc and um yeah sometimes they'll uh, play ball if you're big enough if you you know if the quantity's there Oh, a little grounding spring. Isn't that cute? So thank you very much, Tyler, for sending that, uh, what, more than a decade old uh, TomTom GPS. Now, hands up if you still use TomTom. I, I haven't followed the GPS market for a long time. I'm a Garmin man now, but uh, I've always been a Garmin fanboy ever since my uh, first E-Trex yeller beauty. That looks a bit puffy-wuffy, doesn't it? Hmm, yeah, wouldn't want to keep using that. What do we have next? Next. Itty bitty body boy. This one look, looks excited. That one looks exciting. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Sigrid. Sigrid? Sigrid. Huh. In um, uh, Deutschland. Quite a all my German viewers. So let's go. 
let me keep it that. You want to try and use that? Yeah. Fancy opener with the little. Oh, it looks like a horse, just like you see horse. <laughs> it does look like a little seahorse, doesn't it? Yeah. Where should now, I open it? You got a slice under there. Okay. Yeah. Got it. A slice along there. Yep. Easy. Easy. And other side. Oh, well, that's hard. Yeah. Got it. And along, the, and along the front here. Oh, and along the front. Here we go. And uh, no, you're trying to cut through the cardboard there. Yeah. Oopsies. <laughs> Oopsies. What? Well, there we go. What All do right. we have in here? What's in there? All right. What is this? Oh, more packaging. Uh, more packaging. Trying to trick us or something? All right. I hate it when it, when it's like pass the parcel. <laughs> pass the parcel. I hate gotta... it when it's like pass the parcel packaging. And, and you got to unwrap it. Yeah, I have to unwrap every layer. Yep. Oh, it's like, oh, what? What are you doing? Oh, come on, more, more. More. Oh, and I think it's the last one, at least. Last one? Yep, it's the last one. Definitely. Yep, it's the last one. And it is, is... Slide it down. A calculator. It is a calculator. It's a Casio. Calculator. Beauty. Casio uh, RM 9850G. I don't know the RM designation. That's interesting. Anyway, it's colour power graphic. Oh, colour. Don't want colour on a calculator. That's ridiculous. All right. So that will be a two minute teardown, Sagan. Screen, whoa, the screen's way off. Like that, but like that. It's terrible, Muriel. Oh, what? That's an infrared remote control, geez. Fan, I've never seen that one before. That's weird, let's crack it open. We should crack that open like this, hey -ya! Oh, I think the LCD has come good. Anyway, it's like, yeah, I really don't like the LCD on this. Um, <laughs> just looks terrible. Anyway, this is the RM9850G and it looks, um, it's like a repackaging of the uh, CFX9850G and like it's, it's smaller and different and I don't understand why maybe like a specific market is it like a specific um educational market made in japan all the best stuff's made in japan anyway they had a specific reason to uh to redo that so yeah whatever okay let's tear it apart i cannot get this damn thing open just had to get a bit medieval on its ass. Anyway, isn't this jazzy? Look at this. Lock open. Oh, it's, that's just fantastic. Oh, Bobby Dazzler. So there's your backup battery. I assume it's still like SRAM uh, based storage in this particular model and not uh, uh, none of that uh, non-volatile rubbish. Volatile all the way with LBJ. Oh yeah, that's pretty old school, isn't it? <laughs> Look at those giant SO packages and uh, is that our SRAM down there? Love the liberal use of tape on the <laughs> to try and hold in the huge LCD ribbon in there. Wow, anyway, that's like at least three board construction. That's interesting. Why would they have that uh, that separate one? Is that just to get the reset button which comes through here like this? There's the carbon pad for the reset. Is that is that just for the backup battery? That would be the terminals for that's the terminals for the backup battery. So they've done this board just to get that backup battery. Well, that's a bit how you're doing in the design stage. Why would you do a board just like that and add the extra process of having the ribbon cable and all that manual assembly and the separate bomb item and everything. Surely you could have like made these a bit deeper and have it on the main board. Uh, that's, ah, uh, no. Well, I'll take a peek under the hood here. This is actually a big cutout in the PCB, the joint slot there. All that's cut out and big hole in the bottom. Is that the back, back of our main big ass processor on that board? This is terrible, Muriel. Look at this. We've got our hot bar ribbon attachment, sort of like, and there's no length to get that out. It just goes vertical. So they've just got enough lead length on there 
to assemble these two boards as an assembly before they screw it in here like this. Wow. No, no, someone wasn't thinking when they designed this for assembly. And that ribbon cable is just hilariously long. Look at that. But hey, hey, actually, that's the best thing I've seen so far, actually. The LCD just folds out like that. Actually, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll give them props for that. That's kind of cool, but it's messy when it all goes together. Like, it, it's really how you're doing, but I, I guess I can maybe understand that. I, oh, jeez, come on. <laughs> anyway, let's take a look at our oh, big chippy on the bottom. There it is. Well, it's a tiny chip with a huge fan out, and they've got, that's a separate... Attachment, look at that. Oh, I love that. Love how they've found, fanned that out. That is on its own little board, so they manufacture that as its own assembly. And you could test that. No wackers on a big, uh, you know, a big, uh, it wouldn't be a bed of nails. It'd be like a big um, uh, press contact kind of thing. And, uh, well, maybe you wouldn't. You just sold it straight on and in you go. So that's actually uh, flex tape on there so that's not actually a pcb so it is so it's basically uh chip on flex really is what that is and then they um of course it's got you know a ton of pinouts because it's all got the lcd driver and everything else on it then they just use the fine pin attachment in there like the um and then just hot bar that down around there anyway that's that is fascinating isn't it so, of course, that's a custom uh, Casio ASIC, and, well, that's just, that's beautiful. Wow. Just love the look of that. Anyway, we've got another Hitachi driver down there. Some more SRAM by the looks of it. And Bob's your uncle. Oh, it's got a fancy-pancy crystal. And all that resonator stuff. And there's the uh, infrared module, which actually screws into the back there. And uh, this is like obviously like a classroom model designed for like overhead uh, projector. And this actually remote control software on off. This is designed to uh, yeah hook up to like an overhead uh, class overhead projector or something like that. But anyway, yeah, it's just a um, it's just a lead driver. Like they couldn't build that into the calculator it had to be a separate module uh, you know meh, why because i presume that they are uh, designed well can you buy this without presume you can just buy the calculator without the module but then you've got all the cutouts in the back so maybe not and they like they redesign this whole case and the and the layout and everything uh from the cfx model um 9850 so what like, why wouldn't you build that in somehow? They couldn't do that? Just, I don't know. Doesn't make sense. Anyway, that's really cool. Thanks for sending that in. And uh, I'm not a fan of, like, the big graphing um, calculators, even if they are Casios. But anyway, that's really cool construction. Check that out. We have uh, seen it before. It's not the first time, but I always get a kick out of seeing that. Come here. There we go. There you go. David Flamand from Canada. Hi to all my Canadian viewers from Sigourney. Sig I've heard of I've heard of that. What? Yeah. You have? Yeah, it's a it's a town. I'm pretty sure it's a town. Yeah, pretty you're sure right. It's a town. Really? In, um, yeah. Is it French? Because a lot of Canada is French. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. It, no, they speak mostly French there. Can you say um, hello in French? Bonjour. Can you say goodbye? Au revoir. How about catch you next time? No. Nah. <laughs> that is not French writing. I think it's demo with the and the little squiggle at the top of the M is gone. Let's open it up. You want to open that up? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh. Oh, we need the knife. Come on. Need the knife? All right. Sticky. There we go. Oh, oh, come on, it's the parcel parcel packaging again. Then, there you go. Get kidding me. Hi, Dave. This little project I created to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the 6809. Awesome. Oh, the parcel parcel packaging. I hate parcel parcel packaging. Mate, 
Made from jelly bean parts, this minimal system uses no RAM and only four basic ICs, half of them for audio. The project uses cheap 128 by 64 OLED display. Everything else comes from Digitee, except the 6809, uh, 6809 and the UV, old school UV EEPROM. Great. Oh, well packaged. Well, well packaged. packaged. Look at that. Definitely well packaged. Yeah. Yeah. That's well packaged. Thumbs up. Oh, isn't that cute? And, and that's the base. That's the plastic, that's the, th it's a 3D printed what is that? base. It's a little computer, just like the RC2014 kit Ooh. that we built. Cool. Ooh. So we can power Jinx. that up. <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> we can, we can check it out. And um, it's, it's got, I, it's, it's got mylar tape, like a, a see-through tape on the top. So you can see the EEPROM. Cool. Is that going to block the UV? I doubt it. Anyway, cool. Six, little 6809 project is going to drive a little modern OLED display. Nice. And I know what that is. What? Resistor. Resistor. Very good. Know that. And I would have powered this from a 5 volt USB. Just saying. But it's got a uh, plug pack. It's got, oh, it needs a 5 volt DC plug pack too. Yeah, I definitely would have powered it from a uh, little micro USB, micro or mini USB. We've got millions of those. Well, yeah, we've got to find a plug pack. They've got to find a 5-volt plug pack. I'm sure we can. We've got yeah. to dig in the box of plug packs. <laughs> all right. The money shot for all you 6809 fanboys. Look at that. Oh, and we've got that EEPROM. Yeah, I don't think that... Is that tape going to stop the UV? I, I doubt it. Anyway, apparently... um. Half the parts on here are for the audio, RJRC, and by the way, that's a 99 date code. I don't know if that's acceptable, but at least it's not 2000s, but do, still making the 6809 in 99? Are they still making it today? Maybe. Genuine Motorola. So there's the details from Dave. I don't know if he sells it. Is there a, a, is there a website? No, I, I, anyway, created the project, if I can find a link, I'll put it in. Anyway, 1978 to 2018, beautiful 40th anniversary. Ah, that's that's pretty neat, I like the little uh, 3D printed bottom case on it. Very nice, I like the minimalist nature, it's, you know, take away all, all the audio stuff there, and it's, well, whoops, <laughs> take away the audio stuff there, and, well, there ain't much to it, but, all right, let's power it up. 5 volts, the 6809 <laughs> presents EEV blog. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at that. I even tried to get the color on there. Oh, ah, oh, beautiful. Hang on. Got to hear myself again. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. <laughs> that's great. That's, that's fairly high fidelity. I like that. Bob's your uncle. <laughs> Catch you next time. Love the scrolling too. That's fantastic. 6809. I wonder where he got the 6809 sample from. Must have been another video. I'm sure if you search 6809 EV blog on YouTube, you'd find it somewhere. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. It is indeed. That's fantastic. Thank you very much, Dave. We'll take this one. That one? All, All right. Bo All the boxes are exciting. All from Jen Goet. From Japan. I do all my Japanese viewers. We don't get many from Japan, Sagan. So, Japan! Yeah. All right. And this one looks like an Amazon because... An Amazon? Oh, that's the Amazon... Sign, yes. Swipey thing, yeah. is it? Yes. I think I think you're right, dude. It's, a, it's, from, it's, a, it's an Amazon product. Well, it's an Amazon box. Amazon box. People reuse their boxes all the time. Us engineers, we're pretty frugal. We like to reuse things. Yep. We like to hoard boxes. Yeah. And I can see that over there. Sure, dude. <laughs> There's millions of boxes over there. Millions of boxes. Yeah. Uh, you think I'm hoarding boxes? Yep. Uh. <laughs> busted. <laughs> dude. Uh. You're busted. You're not invited on mailbag anymore. <laughs> Alright. Alright, let's open it up. Please don't be the pass the parcel packaging. Oh, hooray, it's not. Note. And note. It's very nice. 
so fast apart. It's such. It's let's see. Take a look. Hey, take a look. That looks like a kit and a shirt. Ooh, oh, perfect. Oh. oh. What was that? What the statue? Statue? You want to grab it? No. No? We will. Oh, Daddy, there you go. Hi, it's Dave. Here's some kit. goodies from Japan. These bags contain handy, non-standard proto boards. You can buy at Akihabara, um, which is like the it's kind of like the Shenzhen market of uh, Japan. And yeah. these are little non-standard proto boards. Great. Well, have um, a look at each one. Daddy, Very handy. Oh, cool. Casio data bank shirt. Oh, nice. Oh, it's a four banger. It's the Casio data bank watch T-shirt. Cool. <laughs> wow. Awesome. Awesome. So, yeah, I'll give you a close-up look at various non-standard proto boards. Awesome. Mm. You've got to have a junk bin full of, like, miscellaneous proto boards, adapt, like SMD to dip adapters and all that sort of jazz because they're just so handy. You can just you know, need a one-off project or whatever, just a simple thing, a little adapter, a filter or whatever. You can uh, reach for your proto boards and uh, then wire these up. Wow, that's, that's yeah. fascinating. Wait, they've done some, yeah, they've done some artwork on the... Oh, uh, yeah, they, there's art on that, right? There's art. Yeah. There's art on that. Take and I think it matches up to the statue, mate. Yeah, it does. I think that's what the statue's for. Oh, brother, it might be a little bit, you know, weird. Just hold on to your pants. <laughs> wow, they put really weird yeah. pattern shots. <laughs> what is it? That's why it's funny. It's one of those Japanese anime characters. It's Sorry, anime. I, d I, I don't know. You watch uh, Beyblades, don't you? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Japanese anime. They have lots of those in there. That's that's Japanese, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Japanese. That's just kind of freaky. I don't understand the whole Japanese anime thing. Hmm. I don't know what this board is, but it's certainly not a universal thing. And uh, it, it's real interesting that they've got a very fine pattern on the silk screen there, which makes it look really kind of weird. I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, and they've got like a similar thing where they've removed the solder mask on the back. Is that like little, looks like little flowers or leaves or something like that so i'm not sure anyway um the lcd i, I don't know what that board's doing a hey, segment drive operation network oh there it is i'm sure those playing along at home can check it out aha if for once black is actually good i don't mind a good matte black um it, it looks much better look at that just removing the solder mask in those patterns that actually looks um you know these flower type patterns that actually looks quite spectacular I rather like that and then on the back it's much easier to see like compare that to the red one anyway that's much nicer I like that and they've got some once again some Japanese anime stuff I guess Pays to read the note date. The three loose PCBs are for a personal project. PCB artwork was designed with an open source direct bitmap to Gerber tool I made. Oh, nice. It works with both Altium and KiCad. Awesome. You and your viewers can try it online. There you go. So if you want to add your funky patterns like that, it's always been a pain to add that sort of uh, stuff in Altium. You can do it, but it's, yeah, it's always been kind of annoying. And uh, yeah, you can add some nice graphics like that to your PCBs. Well worth doing. It doesn't cost you anything. There's no extra uh, like a cost at the PCB manufacturer for doing any fancy artwork like this. So as long as it doesn't involve any extra production steps, which it doesn't, because they just do the uh, the mask, either the silk screen or the solder mask, it, it doesn't matter what pattern you put on there. There's no cost penalty at all. And of course it's on the EEV blog forum. Everyone's on the EEV blog forum. Not sure what that's supposed to do, but you can check out the GitHubs. Now we're talking regular through-hole matrix and an SMD pad one. Could be handy, not sure what pitch that is, but you know, the more unusual boards like these you have in your kit, the better. And here you go. Seal for our protection. Is that 80 Japanese yen? And it's just got SMD. So once again, um, for point-to-point -point wiring and stuff like that, 
It's neat. And that's actually aluminium backed. Nice. And that one looks pretty handy. We've got 0.1 inch pitch plus other stuff in there. Larger size uh, holes and smaller size holes. That could be really useful. How are they connected? I assume the silk screen shows the vertical connections like that. The columns. And yep, columns and rows. Nice. And if you need round boards for something, fantastic. They're not like uh, aluminium backed. No, no, there you go. Just 0.1 inch uh, matrix boards in a circular form factor. Worth having a few of these in your kit just in case you need that particular form factor. So then you don't have to cut it. And for those who went, well, I wish I had one of those in an aluminium backed one. No wackers. There it is. Sweet. Thanks, JC. Floor's getting a bit. You don't mess. Very light. I said it's been there forever. I don't want to look at the. Wow. What is it? Wow. Okay. This is the oldest mailbag ever. Well. I don't believe that date. Two thousand fifteen. Two thousand and fifteen. That's when Huxley was born. I know. <laughs> Oops. 2015. You're kidding me! Oh. Wait, wait a second. Got someone at the door. So Nick Sayer from <laughs> who's had several sucks of the sab. I think that's why I've left it. He's like, like had three sucks of the sab or something. I chopped the note, Sagan. Ah, oh, what the? I chopped the note. Daddy! <laughs> Nick Sayer from Geppetto Electronics. Uh, Geppetto. Oh yes, that's a replacement, that funky EEV blog clock. I've still got that. That's that, um, it's just a clock movement. Um, uh, it's just, yeah, 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 That's uh, that had the firmware that made it do weird stuff, jump around and things. So it's, yeah, it's been, it, it's, it's been hacked. It's that clock movement. Neat. He discovered there was a flaw in design and the old controllers gained about 10 seconds today <laughs> per day to rectify that. It did bad, like it was jumping all around Daddy, the shop Daddy. anyway. Yeah. Well, we've already got one of those at home, you know. Yeah, yeah but yeah. this is a weird, this one has been hacked so that you replace the regular clock mesin instead of just ticking every second, it'll like go backwards, then it'll jump forwards and it'll like jump randomly all over the place and confuse people. Does that sound cool? Yeah. Sound like a good joke? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> All right. We'll play it on Mummy at home, yeah? <laughs> Put the clock at home. Awesome. Where's Thank the you, day? Mick Jacobs. Thank you very much from Newcastle in California. Didn't know there was a Newcastle yeah. in California? Yeah, didn't you know that? Dude, you know there's a Newcastle in California. Yeah, of course really? I do. Now, where's, where's the date on It's this? pretty new. 22nd of June. 22nd of June. Yep, it's a new one. Yeah. And for all your FPGA aficionados, Web FPGA. All right, we have a oh green. I've got a green USB cable before. Oh, here's the note. Note, thank you. Big one, double sided. Just telling you. All right. We would appreciate any feedback on the usability of our device and maybe a brief mention on one of your platforms. This is the mailbag platform, of course. Um, we have pre-flashed and wired up the stopwatch, stopwatch example for you. You should be able to see the stopwatch in action powering the device via USB. Cool. So this should be a little stopwatch. Where's, how do you do the buttons? I, I assume it just starts counting up fast or something. Cool. Anyway, it's a web FPGA uh, thing. Navigate the website beta.webfpga.io. Click connect device. To, and we should be able to. Uh, would recommend running this one. NeoPixel. Oh, okay. Right. It's oh, the onboard RGB LED uses a NeoPixel LED. So, cool. The synthesis is complete. Flash device. Excellent. Mick, thank you very much. <laughs> I only lost his arms. Ah! You're crazy, dude. Ah, All right. But I can still trump you. Ah. 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 <laughs> And it works right off the bat. You plug it in and you get the uh, windows. And we have a stopwatch. Cool. There you go. It's just a little button on there. So it's nice. Works out of the box. Let's hook it up to the Webby. See if we can program it.
Well, I loaded up and web USB not supported, but I am using um, Edge because it's just a clean uh, browser. Anyway, um, d yeah, it said uh, Chrome or Opera, so I'll try Opera. And bingo, we're in like Flynn. Um, Secure so must be handling a user gesture to sew a permission request. What does that mean? I got no idea. Um, check device type or another page is connected to the device. Anyway, we didn't get the error we got before. Um, this looks nice. We're straight in with some code. We're straight in with a blinky. The hello world of digital logic. Yes. Um, so yeah, that is terrific. So I assume I, I better follow the instructions rather than just dick around. But anyway, without having used this at all i like the interface look at this run synthesis flash device connect device bitstream caching why would you want that because the usb can't keep up and then you get errors or something i don't know i'm not sure what the deal is uh light editor theme there you go so yeah no i, I like the yeah the black is better um editor mode plain vim oh really yes for all you different, um, what, Emacs fanboys? Really? Okay. Sure, a lot of people are going, woo! Knock yourself out. And load local file. Um, that's great. I like it. Device info, waiting for connection. So um, I guess I'll push the reset button. Waiting for connection. Connect device, F9. Cascadia Web FPGA, FPGA program. Connect. Oh, I've got to select it. Then connect. And we're in, look at this, connected to Shasta Plus, is that the name of the board, the Shasta? I don't know. Um, uh, 5,280 logic cell, 16 meg external OSLAN, Neo Pixel RGB LED. So it's recognized our device, tells us all the stuff we've got. That's terrific. That, that just works. Auburn Ventures, uh, Auburn Ventures, LLC, I assume that's their uh, company. This is, I, I'm liking this so far. Okay, load an example from select, ah, oh, right, they recommend, uh, would recommend running NeoPixel, which one? X8 V. No, it's different, they've added some extra stuff since when they printed this. Okay, well let's just fade, NeoPixel X, oh, X8, because they recommend running the X8 fading demo. Don't know what the difference is, fading demo 1, fading demo 2, there's all the code, liking that, it's very well commented. Address it why this module is copied coded for one to two fifty five LEDs in a circular chain. Ah, oh, nice. Yep. I like this because you learn from examples. This is how you get any microcontroller or FPGA or anything else up and running. You don't start from scratch. You load in a Blinky or a Hello World program and project that already works. And then you start mucking around with it until you break it. And when you break it, that's when you start learning stuff. And uh, and you start modifying things. So that's how you learn. And this is all well. And I love um, a huge amount of comments like that. That is just absolutely, that is awesome. So let's just run the synthesis. And, well, here it is. Bitstream loaded in browser. Ready to do, retrieved cache bitstream. Bitstream loaded in browser. Ready to flash. Oh, okay. We already had it. And flash device. Right, so I presume it was already synthesized and it already had it there. Because if I do that again, it's just, a, it was already cached. So it's already been done. Uh, whereas it would have, if we made a change or something, can we actually make a change? Can we just change that to like 1-1 one, one instead of 1-0 and run the synthesis? There we go. Subscribe to stream, blah, blah, blah. Synthesis received the request. Saving top V, synthesizing, map IO, detect the modules for boom, fantastic. Synthesis to runtime. That's that's great. Okay. Let's change that back. Run synthesis again. Oh, synthesis already running. Oh, sorry. Runtime up to two minutes. Compute intensive. Oh, it's still running. Oh. Packing successful. Logic cells 125. Is it is it routing of design? Netlist successful, everything's, wow, this is great. This this is really working out of the box. Ready to flash. Awesome. All right, so I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll redo that. I'll redo the synthesis on that because we I just changed it. Ah, oh, ready to, it, that's smart, it knew. Huh? But I made, the, I made the change over here. Look, 
Or maybe it didn't like the undo. Run synthesis. No? It knows we already have that. Okay. <laughs> Hope it works. All right, let's flash our device, shall we? Is it flishy flashing? It's doing a receive flashing module. Oh, done. Jeez, that was quick. It's only a small, it's only a small bit file. No whackers. All right, so I guess what we press the reset button. Where's our near pixel? I don't see it fading. No, it shouldn't have to do anything. It should just be running that code. So I don't know what the I don't see anything resetting when I press that reset button. So not sure what the deal is. I'll get back to you. Okay, I ran, ran another random demo and it's not doing anything. So, hmm. It says it's doing like all the stuff, but maybe these have been, maybe I have like I've got an out of date board or something. RGB dot matrix demo. Um, audio demo, seven segment uh, clock demo. Let's see if we can get the clock demo running again, although some of my wires have fallen off. I don't know where from. Oops. Or maybe we can just run Blinky. Let's run Blinky. Go Blinky. Flash device. Blink. 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 We have Blinky. We have Blinky. All right, so that works. Um, so I'm not sure what the NeoPixel thing, and if I hold down the reset button, uh, reset buttons, a pretty inconvenient form factor, quite frankly. I press the reset button and it doesn't stop. So not sure what the deal is there. I have to look at the schematic for that to see what the reset button's actually doing. But yeah, okay, we've done Blinky. Cool. So yeah, I won't spend any more time. Joystick demo? There's no, there's no joystick on that board. Anyway, I look. It. I love the web interface. It all. It's all very seamless. It's very, very nice. And Blinky at least works. So I'm, I'm sure the others um, work. There's probably an obvious explanation why uh, the Neo Pixel wasn't doing anything there. But that is, that is terrific. I really like that. That's well worth checking out if you want to get into uh, FPGAs. That's that's one of the best, and it's online. You don't have to download anything. It's pretty cool. I like it. I'll link it in down below. Definitely worth checking out. Well done, guys. This one is uh, this one's old. Sorry, uh, Chris O'Reilly um, from Gardner in New York. So let's have a look at this. New York. New York. You you haven't been to New York, dude. No. I think you. Oh, the past the parcel trick again. Pass the parcel trick again. What does raspberry it say? Pi zeros, it says. It's a Raspberry Pi zero. I made a few of these cases for Raspberry Pi zeros on my oh. CNC meal a few years ago and just came across them during the move. Potter said the cool. send you one in case you had a bad zero line around. Don't we all? <laughs> I don't think I have a Pi Zero. But tons of well, Raspberry well, Pi's. We, yeah, we do. Yeah. Whenever you gave a Raspberry Pi kit to me, remember? Yeah, but that didn't have a Raspberry Pi yeah. Zero. Cool. So, look at that. It was designed for the 1.3 version, and although it will fit a W wireless, as you can imagine, wireless strength will be pretty limited if if not blocked entirely. Anyway, I hope you put it yep. to use. Love watching your channel, Chris. Thank you very much, Chris. That's a cool little... Um, Chris isn't selling these. He just made them on his um, CNC mill. A few years ago and yeah thank you very much that's very cool so that's see you can see the pattern yes. on there how yeah because that, that how the milling machine comes down with the little drill bit and zzz, and yeah because th this was a solid block it was a solid block of aluminium and then yeah. the drill comes down and zzz, yep like this zzz, and mills it all out thanks save it for the demo <laughs> <laughs> all right this one's already open, Sagan. Oh, no, no. I don't know what it is, but I realise that once again, you've got to put mailbag on the top. Open it up. <laughs> nice. It's a multimeter holder. It's a multimeter holder. It is a cradle. Thank you very much, um, Tim. Tim G from Brisbane. It's a it's a multimeter. Holder. It's designed to hold the 121 GW multimeter. Let me get one. Get it even cooler. Yeah. Even cooler if you're strong enough. 
Yeah, you, you might be able to move Well, you got to unscrew it first. Yeah. But there you go. Oh, oh look at it's that. perfect. Fits. Look at that. Perfect. Beautiful. So that, yeah, like, you know, it, it adds a lot of mass to it so that you, you know, it, 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 like you don't have the flimsy stand. All multimeter Bounce. stands are flimsy in okay. some respect. Bounce. And they're not going to fall Bounce. over. Bounce. Hurts there. Ohms there. What's it for you, a jiggy bear? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the uh, milli, that's uh, power, so milli VA. So that's uh, volts times amps. Amps. And microamps, yeah. Milliamps and, and amps. Off. And off. Da, da, da. How would you rate that? Sagan, is that cool? Yeah. Yeah? Cool. Nice. If you unscrew that, you can move it back and forth. Yep. You can adjust the tilt. That's beautiful. Thank you very much. I like that. Oh, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Dinner. Don't know who this one's from because it's, um, it, they've put a barcode thing over the person's name. Anyway, looks like it's. Somewhere in Switzerland, it I think. Like it. It anyway, like postcard. I haven't had a postcard for a while. Thank you very much. Why, if you think you can rip the barcode off. Oh, there we go. Rick Vandermark. Thank you very much, Rick Vandermark. Catch you next time.